I want to take a moment and have everyone stand up. Get that blood flowing, get it pumping into your brain. And in that moment, I want you to think about your life. It's a kind of a big question. But as you reflect on your life, I have a question. So I want you to remain standing if you have ever accomplished a task or done something difficult. Ha! Yes, yes, stay, stay standing. Good job. See, feel proud. You know, take that deep breath being like, yeah, I've done it. Okay. And I want you to remain standing if you believe that you are capable of completing another challenging task in your life. So proud. Go ahead and sit down. Because that right there is confidence, right? But it's a specific type of confidence. See, often in life, we think that we're like, oh, this is just your self-esteem, which is important. And it's an umbrella term that we use to describe anything that has to do with our sense of self, our self-confidence and our self-anything, respect, worth. And so when you have a belief, though, in a task that you can accomplish it, that is called self-efficacy. And that's something I want to explore with you today. And in order to do that, I want to roll with a particular metaphor that you can guess fits with the theme of today, that life is a game. And the reason that I chose this metaphor, outside of the fact that it fits with the theme for today, it's because a life is, in a game is a task. It's something that you do, something that you engage in and that you accomplish. And you want to know that when you play a game that you're going to be successful. And so in this context, saying that, okay, your self-efficacy is your belief that you can accomplish a task. Within the metaphor that life is a game, it is saying, okay, I believe that I can play the game and that I can do it well. And so when you play a game, you want all the pieces. If you want to go out onto the football field and have a rousing game of football, whether it's American or proper football, you want to have all the pieces, right? You need to actually have the football to play football. And it's the same with life. We want to have all the pieces that can make life happy and exciting and help us be successful. You want to play with determination and grit and willingness and passion. And you want that confidence, that confidence that you can succeed when you step out onto that field. And so when you think about your self-efficacy and you think about what you can do, it's amazing how that can reflect in your life. And so, what is self-efficacy, right? It's not a new concept. It's been around for a while, but maybe it's been on the sidelines, off the, on the bench of our lives. So what I want to do is to encourage everyone to get self-efficacy off the bench, you know, do some stretches, do some yoga, warm it up a little bit, get it out into the field so that you can use it, so that you can play your game of life with everything that you've got. The idea of self-efficacy comes from a psychologist named Albert Bandura. And from the 1970s, he's been looking at how self-efficacy affects human functioning. In other words, he looks at as how you, as an individual, play the game. And he has found that self-efficacy affects so much, from how you act and motivate yourself to how you face your challenges and achieve goals. And it's all based in the human experience, because everyone here in this room, everyone in this world, is unique. You're different. You each have your own abilities and capabilities. You have different skills, different talents, and different interests. And so you're going to play your game of life differently than every single person. But no matter how you play that game, you want to know that you're going to be successful. You want to have a strong sense of self-efficacy. And what does that look like? Someone who has a strong sense of self-efficacy, as you can imagine, is someone who is confident, someone who is positive. They focus on the things in life that are successful, even when there are failures. They are people that step out onto the field. They are committed. They are engaged in what they are doing. They are out there saying, I'm giving this all that I've got right now. They're not on the sidelines or distracted watching someone else. They're living their life, doing what they want to do. They are people who move past the intent to do something and actually do it. Instead of saying, oh, I will do this, like I will file my taxes or I will figure out how to do 50 push-ups by next year, they actually go out and say, nope, I can and I am doing it. So how do we as individuals strengthen our self-efficacy? See, Albert Bandura, he says that there are four different ways, four influences of our self-efficacy. 
four exercises in a way if we're gonna roll with the life as a game metaphor. Ways that we can strengthen it, ways that we can make it better. And Bandura says that there's one in particular that's the best, it's the most effective exercise. And that's what I wanna share with you today. It's something that he calls a mastery experience. A mastery experience is something that you have done. The first question that I, have asked, I asked you when you were standing up and getting all the blood flowing is saying, hey, did you do anything in your life? Challenging or difficult or even not. Have you done anything? That is a mastery experience. It's not just what you learn at the end. It's the whole process from A to B. Because if you think about when you play a game, you're going along, right? Let's say you're playing football and you want to go for a goal and you're not 100% sure that you could make it. But you have a coach and friends and family on the sidelines and they're saying, hey, you can do it because you've done it. And that's a mastery experience. It's that whole process that you can go through, whether that goes up and down. Sometimes we know that the game gets a little bit rough, but it's something that helps us. And that whole mastery experience teaches us that we can succeed. And every time we have a mastery experience, every time you accomplish a task, no matter how rough or difficult it might have been beforehand, if it has its ups and downs through the process, but it's ultimately successful, you are strengthening your self-efficacy. And you can learn so much from each of your mastery experiences. For me, one in particular that has influenced my life is what the first language I decided to learn, besides obviously English, which I'm still working on, but is Latin. <laughs> I took Latin in high school, which, you know, I realize that's not exactly a foreign language, but it's a foreign language. It might be dead, but it's not my native language, so by definition. And, you know, it was really exciting. I took it from my last three years of high school. And in fact, I learned more about English grammar in the three years of taking Latin than I did the 12 years of school. So it was a very productive three years. But I had a plan, people. I had a game plan. And that game plan was I was going to become an Egyptologist. And to do that, I needed to learn Arabic because what is the use of going to a country and not being able to talk to people? So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take Arabic. So I go off to university, you know, bright-eyed, excited as a little freshman in America, and go, okay, here we go, sign up for Arabic 101. I'm gonna do this. Sit down and go to class the very first day. You know, you can imagine there's that little bit of nervousness, a little bit of trepidation, because you're like, I don't really know, I've never been to college before. But, you know, that's okay. I believe I can do it. I did high school. I can go to university. And I sit down in this class. I'm like, okay, whew, look at my teammates. You know, your classmates around, you're like, we've got this. People, we've got this. We can learn. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And the teacher comes in, you know, all professional and whatnot, as college professors often are, and says, okay. And he just speaks Arabic the whole time. And it hit me. Oh, right. <laughs> I've got to learn how to talk. That's awkward. Because Latin, as being a dead language, you don't have a casual conversation in Latin with someone on the street. I mean, you can, if you want. You don't just go up to someone and say, hey, quit a geese, which I think means, how are you? Don't quote me, it's been a while since I took Latin. <laughs> quam quam is the only word I remember. And it hit me that, how am I supposed to learn a foreign language and, and talk? I mean, I, you know, you go to the playbook of life and it's like language skills. Reading, writing, listening, speaking. <laughs> Whoops, I should learn how to talk. I mean, I speak English, but the concept of speaking in a foreign language terrified me. So I left class that day, and I felt like I had just done a glorious face plant of life. You know, that you're triumphantly running down the field, and you trip over your shoelace, and you're dead, you're gone. And you're like, I'm gonna quit, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna go home, drop the class, and I'll just figure out a new life plan. Egypt doesn't need me then. And, you know, I got home and I had one of those, you know, internal rousing debates with myself. You know how they often go. There's that part of you that's like, ah, uh, I don't know, I'm scared. And then your coach comes in. And this coach is self-efficacy and it is wise. It's been around the block a few times. It knows. It comes in and says, okay, excuse me. Let's open the playbooks, sure. You say that you can't learn this language, you can't learn Arabic, why? This part of you is just like, eh. Because, well one, I have to learn a new alphabet. It's written the opposite direction of English. I just, I don't know if I can do it. it. I mean, how am I also supposed to learn it if my teacher doesn't speak English? 
If he's speaking Arabic, how am I supposed to pick up this language? I don't know. I thought those were pretty valid points. And here comes self-efficacy and says, okay, excuse me. Let's roll it back and let's open the playbook. Sure, you took Latin and you didn't learn speaking skills. That's okay. But let's see what you did learn. You learned vocabulary and how to learn vocabulary. You learned grammar. Hey, you learned more about grammar in English as well, so that's something. You learned how to conjugate verbs and decline nouns. No one does that anymore. That's important, so why can't you take that and apply it to learning a new language, to learning Arabic? I was like, you know what? Coach self-efficacy, you are right. I can do it. So I did go to class that next day. Teacher still spoke Arabic. I still really had no idea what was going on. I did learn the personal pronouns that day, though. I was really proud of myself. I was like, yes, teammates, we've got this. Even if it's one word, we learned something. And it was really exciting because I ended up doing Arabic as half of what I did in my undergraduate degree, which was unexpected. It was challenging. I believe me, I was not a natural speaker. The reading and writing part, fine, but the speaking part, who even did some advanced studies in Cairo and people would look at me and be like, what language are you speaking? It's like, I'm trying. But that was what counted, was that I believed that I could do it because I had done it before. I can see some of you thinking, going, well, Mary, it makes sense that you can take a master experience for Latin, because that's a language, and apply it to Arabic. It's also a language. So, I mean, come on. It's like playing the variation of the same game, like playing chess and speed chess, or something like that. And so, you're right. You know, sometimes the game changes, but a mastery experience is so much more than the end result. It's the process that helped you get through that mastery experience, right? Your determination to continue, your grit, your optimistic realism, or your realistic optimism, whichever way you decide to view the world, those are things, those are traits that you develop as you go through a mastery experience. Because as you are accomplishing a task, you develop traits that you might not even notice. The courage to do something, to do something new. Hey, to step out onto that field and try a new game. To go and say, hey, I'm gonna do this tomorrow and I'm gonna do it today. The willingness to be okay with being awkward because let's be honest, we're all a little bit awkward. And when you're living and doing something new, it's okay to be awkward. You learn the resilience, right? To bounce back from those moments where it gets tough and not to give up. You learn how to be patient with yourself. You learn to be excited about when you learn new things to feel that sense of accomplishment. Because guess what? The game does change. Sometimes you're going along and you have got this. You're, you're kicking the ball down the field and you're like, I've got that, I'm gonna make this, I know the rules, I have strategies, I know the playbook. But the whistle blows, someone pulls you off the field, and all of a sudden you're playing competitive cup stacking. Which is real, by the way, I did it in fifth grade, it's pretty awesome. And so you just, but you don't know the rules, so you're like, ah, how am I supposed to learn to play this game? But it's okay, because it's the moment where the game changes. It's the moment where it gets a little bit challenging that makes life exciting. It makes, life, it makes life so much more thrilling and fulfilling because guess what? You get to learn something new. And with a strong sense of self-efficacy, it makes it accomplishable. It's not some undoable new sport. It's not CrossFit. It is doing what you want to do and believing that you can do it. And if you believe you can do CrossFit, you can do it too. So you know what? Nothing can hold you back if you believe that you can do it. Because I didn't end up becoming an Egyptologist with my Arabic skills as my original plan was. My game of life changed and it introduced me to new passions and to, to new things. But Arabic, it taught me more than just a language. It taught me patience. It taught me diligence. And most of all, it taught me the courage to speak up. Everything that has led me to more mastery experiences that have enriched and fulfilled my life. Because my friends, the game of life, it's fun and fantastic. It's exciting. And it can be so much more fulfilling and wonderful when we play the game with everything that we have, with nothing on the sidelines. That when we go out onto that field, that we say, 
okay, I've got all these qualities and I've got the confidence that I can do it, that I can succeed. Because the game does get tough. Sometimes those moments can hurt a little bit when we fall or we fall out of bounds or someone steals the ball. But it's in those moments where a strong sense of self-efficacy can help us get back on our feet. It can help us get the ball back and get back into the game and recommit and do well. Because you have had mastery experiences. You have accomplished something. You all stood. So that means that was at least one thing that you have done in your life. And I'm sure that you have done hundreds of things. And you will continue to have hundreds and thousands of mastery experiences that will not only teach you new skills and talents, but as well as help you develop traits that will help you have so many more. Because every time that you succeed, each time you complete a task, no matter if it's really rough in the process, you are strengthening your self-efficacy. So in your game of life, give it everything that you have because you are capable. Thank you.